John Denver had a song that said something to the effect that he came home to a place he'd never been before. When I rode into Dubois in 1971, I had the same feeling. I came home to a place I'd never been before. Meredith showed up a couple of years later and... Who did I meet on day two? Mr. Wonderful. It seemed like the center of the universe to us because I came here just on a recommendation to do a bighorn sheep study on Whiskey Mountain, who was the only other person living in Torrey Valley at the next ranch down was Torrey. And so we were in heaven. You know, we had landed in heaven. There's no question about it. It was meant to be. I said, it doesn't get any better than this. Serendipity and good luck are wonderful things, and that's what's driven our lives, I think. Right now we're in the heart of our conservation easement. This cottonwood grove here is really the, the main wildlife habitat that we're trying to preserve. We see the deer come up by the thousands from the low country in the winter up into the high country in the summer and they use this as a staging area. We have a lot of deer that have their fawns right here in this cottonwood grove because it's such a protected area. The ecological integrity of Greater Yellowstone is complete with these kind of lands that they can move through freely. The iconic ungulate species you see here, deer, elk, pronghorn, that are moving across this landscape, they're following these traditional migration routes all of which cross private lands at some point. And having protections on those private lands is key to ensuring the functionality of those migrations. So if you think of a pronghorn antelope that you see in Grand Teton National Park, that antelope will actually spend more of its life outside of the national park than inside it. When the deep snows come, the pronghorn has to move in order to access food. It will travel in what's now known as the path of the pronghorn down into Sublette County, across private lands, and down into Winter Range where it can thrive. And when we talk about connectivity, that's what we really mean, is the ability of those animals to be able to move and access the full suite of lands that they need in order to thrive. Sunlight Valley, the Crandall and Clark's Fork Valley are to the north of us. Clark's Fork's so wild and scenic. So it's pretty special country. We purchased the place in 1953. That was the core of it, and then we purchased the rest of, uh, on Elk Creek, the rest of that in 55 or so. I came here as a kid and did chores and stayed and became a wrangler in a camp. I went into teaching, but then we always came back here in the summer to be with teenagers and be in sunlight. And what could be better than that? Our favorite place on the property is, we call it the point, and it's at the confluence of Sunlight River and Elk Creek. Elk Creek at that point is spread out into a wide creek with a lot of pools, willows. The water flows through that and then drops off a cliff into the Sunlight River. We call it the Fairy Falls, and that's one of our favorite places to cool off in the summer. It's a special place to the wildlife, and I, I think our families picked that up. There have been many times when we've walked down there and we've said, this is the place we ought to build a cabin. And there you have the genesis of why we are so committed to this conservation easement. Because no matter how good our intentions are, at one point, someone in our family, some generation's gonna build down there. 
really is this valley. It's very small and it can be ruined really quickly. Whatever we can do with our neighbors and ourselves to prevent development, we're all in. We want our children, their children, to have the same experience, have the same sense of this valley that we have. I think a lot of people come to this area and they're struck by how it looks and sort of take it for granted that things are just the way they are. But I think a lot of people don't realize that that ecosystem function and those open spaces are a product of 43 years of intentional work by the Jacks Hole Land Trust to protect these areas in perpetuity. This is the most connected, protected, highest function ecosystem in the entire lower 48. And we are fortunate enough as an organization to work with landowners who see values in the land outside of financial, who see almost an obligation to uphold the function of the ecosystem. The character of the work of the Jackson Hole Land Trust is meant to reflect those communities, those people, the pride, the passion that people have in this place. We've intentionally been working towards developing our community conservation program opening up spaces like the R Park, places like Emily's Pond that allow public access are really intended to provide safe places for families to come and take those first steps into conservation and to inspire that next generation of conservationists. Our work is really just providing tools for the communities to continue to elevate, to protect, to promote, and to grow those characteristics that make this place so amazing.